Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to Channel BK. My name is Brian. Welcome to another album review, and this is for The World is a Beautiful Place, and I Am No Longer Afraid to Die. Harmlessness. Got it. The World is a Beautiful Place is an emo, pop punk, rock band from Connecticut, and this is their second studio album, and this is the first time I'm listening to them. I've been hearing about them for a little bit, and I was really, really, really excited to hear them from sort of all the styles they were and sort of the songs they write and their musical abilities and all that sort of stuff, so I was really excited to hear something like this in a little bit. And it was kind of exciting to just sort of see what that sound was going to be like, because I've been hearing from a lot of people where, yes, it's emo, and there's like pop punk influences on here, but there's some interesting rock elements. And there definitely is scattered throughout this whole entire album. But at the end of the day, I fell in love with this. I think there's obviously some pop punk tripes with some of the writing, but I just, I'm a sucker for stuff like that, and I loved this album. From the second it started, I think it just took me on this journey of just interesting stories, some interesting lyrics, some great music, and I was just so involved and captured with what was going on. And I think one of the main weird themes on this album in terms of music is there's a lot of kind of like, not necessarily switch ups, but something like the opening track, which sort of does this big build at the end where it's mainly sort of this quiet track or wend over, which gets really, really faster, or January 10th, 2014, which kind of has a lot of different aspects or I Can Be Afraid of Anything, which kind of goes through a lot of different musical moments throughout its long runtime. That was something that kind of was interesting with a lot of these tracks is there's a lot of different styles within these tracks that they go through, and I thought that was really interesting, and I think for the most part they kept the tracks interesting even when they were really long or they were really short. But You Can't Live There Forever is the opening track, I loved it. It's very quiet, it's haunting, and like I said, it does build near the second half, and then it goes to the quiet moment again for the ending. And then January 10th, which I understand kind of the weirdness of the vocal delivery and some of the lyrics and stuff like that with what the story is, but I don't know. I don't think it's that turned off-ish. Like, I kind of dug it. If the story is about this woman in Mexico who goes on, which is a true story, going on this sort of vigilante spree against a couple bus drivers known for raping women who went on the public transportation. And it's kind of an interesting story. And yes, I think maybe the vocal delivery is kind of a turnoff for the fact that this is kind of a dark story. But I don't know. I kind of loved it. I think it was so interesting to tackle a topic like that, write the music they did for it, and kind of portray it the way they did with this music. Obviously, someone like Sun Kill Moon has done that in his songs, but it's much different for what he's doing rather than this group, which I think kind of did an interesting twist on that whole idea. Then we get the word Lisa, which I thought, especially at the end, has these great, great progressions with the chords. I thought it was absolutely great. And this is like one of the shortest track tracks on here, if you don't count blank number 11, which is mainly just sort of an instrumental piece. But then we get tracks that are a little bit longer, something like Mental Health, which is one of the more acoustic tracks on here. And I thought the vocals were really great on it. I love the somber mood and something like We Need More Skulls, which is just this heavy, dark, and just brooding track. Just super rough, super just loud. I want to go to I Can Be Afraid of Anything for a quick second, because like I said, this track has a lot of different places where it goes. And I think, ironically, when it gets to the part when he starts singing about like the pacing parking lots line, I don't know if it's just me, but it sounded like legit Vampire Weekend. Like, I don't, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but it sounded like Vampire Weekend, which was kind of odd. But this, again, is one of my favorite tracks where it's like it goes on these very different tracks, and I think it keeps the track very engaging and interesting. Rage Against the Dying of the Light is also an example of how the track sort of starts off a certain way, and then for like the second half, it goes on this path of it being like the main vocal sing, and it's this brash, brash, brash guitar, and then it kind of gets quiet. It goes back to that brashness, and then it's quiet again as he's singing. So it kind of, again, most of these tracks on here kind of go down these very 
different intricate paths. But I mean, as a full package, one of the things I was always engaged with was the vocals, the delivery, the stories, the lyrics. And again, I think the music, even though sometimes the music wasn't necessarily certainly super groundbreaking, I was still always invested in what they were doing, especially something like Mount Hum, which I think is not one of my absolute favorite tracks on here, but at the same time, I think didn't catch me off guard in terms of a boring way because that track I think is probably one of the more longer sits, not because it's the longest track, but it's because they spaced out a lot of the different elements on there, which threw me off at first. But again, for the most part, this whole album actually leading up to these last two tracks are either very normal length, there are some that are a little longer, like January 10th, for example, but most of them are actually just kind of short. And again, I think there were some interesting guitars, some very nice, cleanly, just fun drums on a lot of these tracks. There's some weird synths, like on Raw Patera Dance. I know I probably just butchered that whole fucking name, but there's like these weird synths that kind of come in again a little bit into the track or like some weird kind of sounds that are in it. So I feel like there's a lot of interesting elements that are brought into this package. And I think at the end of the day, for the most part, they were all pulled off. And I was just so excited listening to this album, mainly because me going in as a first time listener, I just was very invested and I was kind of surprised that I ended up liking this as much as I did. But if you have listened to Harmlessness, what do you guys think? Do you like it as much as me or hate it more? Are you kind of in the middle? Leave that all in the comments below as well as some of your favorite tracks. If you like, please like and please subscribe if you want more music reviews as well as movie, television reviews, original stuff hopefully coming soon. Raw discussions every now and again. Thank you guys so very much for watching and thank you for tuning in to Channel BK. Peace out, guys.